Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the final four and Badger Breakdown brought to you by U.S. Cellular. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LaPay. Was there a point in the season when you felt like this team had what it needed to make it back here, and that is the final four? I'm trying to remember a specific point. I mean, they, they've been pretty good all along. I, I think once the way they bounced back from the Rutgers game, and I think after the Trayvon Jackson injury, Bronson Koenig, it didn't really take them long to get into the flow of what they were doing. He had played, obviously, but his minutes, his role changed, and, and rather dramatically so. But the way he blended in and the way this team played together with the new starter quickly, uh, we knew this team could score. Uh, and we, we worried about the depth, I guess, especially after Trey's injury. But uh, I think the way Bronson played, that, that gave me the, the real feel that, yeah, this team still, without a veteran guard like Jackson for an extended period, that this team still had the goods to, to make a deep run. I don't think any of us, though, knew how far Frank Kaminsky would develop, or for that matter, Nigel Hayes, because those have been two of the storylines, the narratives on the, both those players, which have really influenced this season. A great story, because Frank Kaminsky was a secret to no one. He was the cover guy uh, in multiple publications. A tremendous year last year, and as good as he was last year, he's better this year, which says a lot about Frank and his development and the coaches and his teammates around him. Uh, you're right, Nigel Hayes last year was a high 50% free throw shooter. Got to the line a lot, didn't make it very consistently when he got to the line this year he's mid 70s he's added the three-point shot to his arsenal uh, six man of the year last year now a very important part of the starting lineup that's the beauty of this team and I think where Bo always talks about each team has its own identity even with so many players returning from a year ago you have players who have grown who have gotten better and that's what makes this team a little different from last year and the interesting part of this job I'm sure for both of us is watching players how and how they handled certain adversities during the course of a season and, and it's not going to all be uh, easy for Sam Decker it started off slowly he had to deal with an ankle injury then maybe had to deal a little bit with his confidence during that stage and then we've seen since then as he got healthier and healthier his confidence grew the, the weight of the expectations too I think when you're a star player no matter where you're from but if especially when you're playing for the University of Wisconsin and you're a high school star in the state of Wisconsin, there, there are a lot of expectations to go with that. But it's easy for maybe the more casual observer to either not remember or, or ignore the fact that he was hurt early in the season. It hampered his play. Um, this tournament is all about getting hot at the right time, either for a team or for an individual. We've talked a lot here in, in the, the stretch run, and actually before the stretch run, of, of Sam's aggressive nature, his ability to do some damage, either dribble into the hoop or getting a pass on a cut to the hoop. But now with that outside shot, remember the last six games leading into the NCAA tournament, Sam was 2 of 17 from the three-point line. Now he's, what, 13 for 27, including the, the lights-out performance in L.A. Uh, that's big work. At any stretch of the year, you do it on this stage, it's special. All of these players have embraced the moment. I think we're, we're well aware of that. But if there's one player who probably embraces it more than any other, it has to be Josh Gosser, who came back off that very ugly knee injury um, and has been the heart, part of the heartbeat of this team since he got here. We, we will always remember the big shot that, that Sam hit, or big shots that Sam Decker hit, the uh, Zach Showalter with some of the work that he has done in this tournament. And we'll always remember that, but the players are always very, uh, very aware to point out to the rest of us that, you know, it was Gosser's big play in the Big Ten Tournament Championship game to keep a possession alive for Wisconsin. Uh, on a bad pass against pressure against Arizona, a deflection there was Josh Gosser, right place, right time. Well, it's more than just dumb luck. The hustle allows him to, to be able to be in position to make those type of plays. And that really, that's the stuff that doesn't show up in the box score very much, but it's something that players always remember. Okay, let's get to the matchups between Wisconsin and Kentucky. Last year, they doubled Frank Kaminsky. They have Willie Cauley-Stein, who didn't play in the tournament a year ago, arguably the best defender in college basketball. He can defend the, the point, the one, or the five. How do you think Calipari is going to play Kaminsky? Well, the first thing, I think this year, Frank's been double teamed a lot anyway. And, you know, either bigs or you go small and then you double team off of that. So I think he's used to that. The thing about Willie Colley Stein, as you said, he could guard 
one through five. And I think with that kind of length, I would still imagine that they would mix things up against Frank. You, you, you might see Cauley Stein, Stein on him for a while. You could see some other players rotate. They're so deep. They, they obviously have other options to do that. But I would think there are times they'll double them. There are times they will tease it and not. I think you're just, with a player like Kaminsky, you're trying to do anything you can to slow him down, get him out of sync. But where Kaminsky, I think, is better prepared for this, he's just a better player than he was last year. He knows what to do when he's getting doubled. The challenge is they're playing length in Kentucky that no one ever sees until you play Kentucky. And it's a hard, it, it, as Kaminsky said, it's an impossible thing to simulate in practice. It may take a few minutes to really get used to what he's in for. Not only Willie Cauley Stein, but Carl Anthony Towns right now looms as maybe a, a number one pick overall in the NBA draft, the length, the size of Kentucky, what they bring off the bench with Trey Lyles, or when they start Lyles, they can go big and bigger. And you can't simulate that. There's no way you can prepare for it. You just have to adjust to and, it. And to their depth, I mean, when you look at Towns, he has 25 points against Notre Dame, uh, and then he has another game where he has one. The leading scorer for Kentucky is averaging about 11 points a game. They have such great balance. I mean, they are, they are selfless. I know that's a term that's used a lot, but – I mean, when you have eight or nine McDonald's All-Americans on your roster, which Kentucky has, and they're able to make this work where nobody has eye-popping individual statistics, but as a team, the stats are very eye-popping. That, that says a lot. Towns has fouled out of six games this year. So you're thinking, hey, if they can get him in foul trouble, that's great. Well, it would be, but then they plug another big in there. They're just, they're just that good. You have to be close to flawless to beat them. Teams have approach that level, but they haven't quite gotten to that level yet. Final thought. I know early in the game I'm going to be watching to see how the Badgers handle the glass, if they can rebound uh, with Kentucky, if they can limit second-chance points. Is there one thing that will influence your thinking on whether or not the Badgers can win this game in the first 10 minutes? I would look at the other end, Kentucky, and you have to dig deep to find potential flaws. Kentucky, as big as it is, and they're, very, they can, they're good at hitting the offensive glass, but at times they're vulnerable to giving up second chance opportunities. It was interesting to me, Notre Dame and some other teams have been able to do it, get some production in the paint. First blush, you're thinking for sure, Wisconsin's gonna have to be able to shoot the ball mid-range and beyond, and I believe that's the case. But we've seen this with both teams through the years. You need to get the ball inside, via the pass, via the dribble, knowing that you could get two, three, four, they average seven block shots a game. You're gonna get some shots that are sent into the fourth row. So be it. You keep, you pick your spots, you stay aggressive. If they can go inside out, we know this team can shoot. You just want to give yourself as reasonable a chance to get a decent look against this length as possible. No, that's a good point, too, because you can't settle for the three. Everybody talks about Kentucky and how to beat the Wildcats. Well, you have to hit a lot of threes. Notre Dame hit four and were in the game right until the end, had the lead late in the game, but then couldn't get a defensive stop right. when they needed to. Yeah, if they'd hit five, they'd have won, right? Absolutely. They're four, four for 14, but if, they, if the Badgers can somehow find a way to manufacture some second-chance opportunities and limit Kentuckys, which, good luck. A lot of teams have tried to do that and haven't been, have been unsuccessful, but the Badgers have size, too. The Badgers have versatility on the front line that makes them, I think, unique in college basketball. This to me is not, this is not Team USA against the Russians. This is not miracle on ice. But you have to be close to flawless to do it. But people have said all along, not just us, people with no, no dog in the fight, that if there's a team that could knock off Kentucky, it's Wisconsin. It's great to get here. It'd be even greater to stay here for another game. That Absolutely. has been the goal since last year. From Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown brought to you by U.S. Cellular.